New project while on the road. We're getting trailer wiring fault and I'm sick of it. Last summer, 7,000 miles, not one error. Two summers ago, we had a Ford system update. There was a bug. So I went to Napa, we're at a rest stop, kids are relaxing. I'm gonna fix this trailer wiring fault. Here we go. We're gonna do this right. I need new wire nuts. The old ones aren't gonna go back on and I don't trust any of that wiring. I think I found the wire fault problem. I'm not sure, I'm gonna cut the cable, clean them. But to do that, I need wire nuts. Let's go get those nuts, baby. Nuts. See ya! Check it out, I got my nuts! <laughs> Seven hours later, I ended up putting the same wiring harness right back on and we're still getting trailer fault. Cleaned the connections, did a bunch of stuff. The parts at Napa were way too expensive and not the right ones. So more parts coming to the in-laws. Thanks, Ted. Hey guys, Jeff here with Jeru Camping Adventures. You saw me trying to fix the wiring harness for brakes. Seven hours at the rest stop. I tightened everything. And as a result, I think I actually made things worse by letting energy find the path of least resistance. Our breakaway cable fried. Look at that. Wire melted, wires came in contact, power stayed on, brakes stayed engaged. We felt a couple chugs last night. Wires heated up near the hubs. We're probably down to zero brake shoes, but I think I found the source of the problem. It was probably a faulty breakaway system. It's probably like a $15 part. Inspect your parts, guys, because now, I gotta replace hubs and wheel assemblies. Man, what a mess. Let's get this done. The breakaway cable fried these cables going to the brakes and I'm trying to salvage what I have. Ugh. What a disaster. Oh, did that melt too? Oh no. Did that go through the hub and melt? Oh my, still at it, but check this out. We have troubleshooted, we have rewired. I gotta get to the back right and solve that. The wires are totally fried, but watch. That spins freely, which means brakes are not engaged. Yes. Took about 57 seconds last time. I feel like the price is right, you know, when you whoosh, spin it and you try to get the dollar. Well, come on, baby. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Uh, I'm not winning right now. Uh, but I'm gonna win and it's gonna rock. So stay tuned, I'm still doing this. Hear the truck running? Oh, the license plate's in there. I don't like covering license plates. Time for a test. All four wheels spin freely, but the front right one grinds a little bit more. Yeah, hear that? Doesn't sound good. Right now one tire's lifted, so I'm gonna hook up, spin it, press brakes. Just test voltage, test power. Otherwise, I can't imagine that much metal or whatever else being in there. If it's brake shoe pad, then that shouldn't make that sound either. Let's do this. <sighs> Truck stops the trailer wheels, baby. Uh, manual brake controller works, foot pedal works, no more trailer wiring fault. I really think it was the breakaway cable. Now what we're gonna do is drop that last wheel, pull the truck forward, brake, and then go backwards and brake. And maybe that'll help reset the uh, self-adjusting brake system in there, I think. Let's do it. The back right tire does not brake right now. Three tires is better than zero, which is what we've had. So I'll take three tires, 75% stopping. Let's take a look at the bottom. I basically wire nutted the power supply coming from the back left tire through the axle, because I don't want any shorts. Inside the hub assembly, the green wires are totally exposed, so positives touch a negative. More importantly, the positive fried wire could be touching any of the ground metal within the hub. So I cut those wires. Back right tire will not engage brakes. But again, three brakes, better than zero. All right, new day, same shirt, baby. I'm not getting another one dirty, no way. I took a shower last night and the tub was filled with dirt. Ah, kids haven't taken a bath. Kids smell like kids anyways. Hey. I'm gonna get to work because we gotta figure out that uh, internal parts, what's the grinding. If I can just get this thing rolling without any grinding sound, we may just continue on our trip without any brakes. Uh, that's not good. And since you're gonna watch this later, that's okay. Uh, we'll be safe, don't worry. Come on, come on, let's get to work. Haha, -ha, I win, sorta, check this out. 
The hub assembly, which lets the wheel spin, is still intact. That's what you see with the rock on. And what we're looking at now is the brake assembly without any braking components. But the spindle is still in place, and I'll be able to throw the hub assembly back on and then put the wheel back on. I disengage the power by wire nutting the power supply coming across from the other tire. Now we'll have a functioning tire that doesn't grind. Still no brakes, but truck's beefy, we should be good. Uh, we're still toying with the idea of moving along or going to the next spot and getting some brakes. Um, I've been reassured many times that the truck is safe. It should be, right? Um, but in accident situations, you need brakes. We drive careful, but again, accident situations. For now, we can at least drive. I'm gonna rinse and repeat, three more tires to go. Check it out. Silence. No brakes, but no grinding either. With the grinding, we could have had more damage internally, and then the whole wheel could fall off. And that wouldn't be good because then we'd totally be stranded. On to the next three tires. Well guys, I did it. All four wheels down, torqued. Check out this bucket of garbage. And also, make sure you torque and read your steps. I find step number four the most helpful. Following excessive braking, <laughs> that's what we had, make sure you check your lug nuts. All right, off to the next campsite finally. Here we go. Hey guys, we made it to Brookings. I got my parts and all the brake assembly and wheel assembly stuff. Thanks to Ted's in-laws, John, lifesaver, man. He was able to accept shipment, saved it all for us. I checked all the boxes, we got what we need. All right, you get a wheel assembly, you get a wheel assembly, hub assembly, hub assembly, solar parts, solar parts, it's like Christmas in here. We just added about two to 300 pounds of payload, baby. The girls are hanging out, look at this. This is amazing. Let's get to camp. I'm gonna do the work there. But first, let out some stress, man. Here we go. Hey, what? We got to hang out on. Get those feet clean. No sand in the trailer. Hey there, another day working on the brakes. We're at Cape Blanco today. We're here for five days so plenty of time check this out brake assembly backing is off and the nuts were not tight at all uh, i thought i was gonna have to struggle with them it's an 11 16th inch we're gonna put the new stuff on and the new wheel hub it's already pre-packed pre-assembled and put the tire back on right there mommy's relaxing in the sun we got starlink right there open sky pretty sweet uh it's getting to work one tire almost done almost Here's the new brake assembly for the back left tire. You're supposed to torque those uh, nuts to 50 pounds or so. I just used my He-Man strength because the weld point for the spindle and the axle hub is in the way. So I can't fit a socket on there, which is a bummer. But 50 pounds is pretty easy. I'm out of breath right now because uh, I've been working out. I probably did more than 50, but that's okay. Making progress. All right, guys, I messed up. I got the right size backing. I got the right size hub, but notice mine's a six and that's a five. Amazon, I just checked, doesn't even have a six lug pattern for the 10 inch. So I probably just ordered, I messed up. We're gonna throw the old one on. An old scarred wheel hub assembly with brakes is better than no brakes. Yet another day. Last night I was up till 10 doing the self-adjusting brakes initial adjustment. My axle plate is pretty much flush with where you're supposed to put the screwdriver and then tilt it up and down. So it was a pain. I ended up having to take the wheel hub off a couple times. Uh, when I was doing this yesterday, I tightened so much according to instructions that the brakes were pressing against the wheel well. No matter what I tried because of my dumb axle plate, I couldn't loosen it, so that's why I had to take everything off, and as a result, I was bending and unbending the cotter pin. It broke, I had to make a MacGyver cotter pin. Oh, it was a pain, so uh, lesson learned. Today's process is super long because I'm 
wiring all new brake wire like I did yesterday in the axle tube on the rear. The front axle tube also has new wire. I've tested continuity for the positive and ground wire. Everything's good. The self-adjusting brakes should allow, after initial adjustment, freely spinning, but a little bit of grind. That's the shoe pad pushing up against the wheel well. And I got about one and a half rotations out of this back tire. So that's what I'm going to match on the rest. I've already adjusted the flywheel and I'm hoping to avoid everything that I had to do yesterday because it's seven o'clock and it's already taken a long time. I'm probably going to have to do the right side tomorrow, but that's okay because the wire is run. I just have to wire nut and then put the wheel on and throw some more grease in there uh, with the same tricks. Cotter pin not bent. I've already lost two this trip. One of the metal pieces broke. The brake assembly, which uh, I'll show you this. Boy, this is gonna be a long video, but I'll clip it probably. Right here, these things. This screw nail thing goes into the back of the brake assembly, and then this arrow connects to a spring, and as it twists, you can take it out, and then that's how I dismembered everything after it already dismembered itself. But I filed the end of this, looks like a little arrow, and then I used this as my cotter pin because we had to get out of here, and stores don't have the beefy cotter pins. I think you're supposed to replace your cotter pin and your dust cap each time you do wheel work, but uh, we're on the road, so I didn't have those. I filed this, I bent it, it worked, great. It's amazing that you do all this work, you tighten everything to spec, and a little dinky cotter pin holds on your tire. So if you ever see a tire flying off a trailer, they probably didn't tighten the lug nuts, or the castle nut flew off because cotter pin broke, or they forgot to put the cotter pin in. What a joke. Anyways, here we go. Here's the top. That matches what the back left tire was. So you wanna make sure all your brakes on each tire is adjusted equally. It only took me 20 minutes this time, it took me two and a half hours last night with multiple removal. So find your trick, make what works for you. All right, another day working on the trailer brakes. We're gonna do the right side because I got the left side done. Uh, that was the most pain, had to do the wire nuts, the new wire run. Today should be easier. Um, let's get going. <laughs> Here we go, working on the fourth and last tire. I got the wheel hub assembly off and it's all clean spindle. I'm gonna take the backing plate off and get to work. The brake assembly is on. The backing nuts are nice and tight. Uh, recommended 40 to 50 pounds of torque, but I cannot fit a socket and hence I can't use my torque wrench because of the stupid weld ring for the spindle. We're, we're running into some Frankenstein issues, I think, but whatever, we're dealing with what we have. Here we go. Haha, -ha. brakes are done. Did the initial adjustment of the self-adjusting brakes, which is very important. You're supposed to, uh, like I said the other day, make sure they're tight and then back off. So I did that and I spun about one and a half rotations and now, dun -dun -dun -dun, the brake away. This is $10. This is what fried, not sure why, but in hindsight, all the trailer wiring fault was due to this. So test continuity, which I just did. And then also I just sized wire and I'm putting it in this nice fancy conduit. And then I'll wire one wire to 12 volt power, one wire to the blue slash black wire. Yours may be different in your junction box, just make sure you wire appropriately. And that's it. We just tested the brakes, everything hums, and then we also tested the manual brake controller and it hums even louder because it applies full force. So we're getting there, we're safe. Yeah, baby. Woohoo! Well guys, that's it, we did it. New brakes, uh, adjusted. Breakaway cable, newly installed. Check that out. There it is. Whoop, there it is. No more trailer wiring fault. Uh, everything fires accordingly. I lowered the gain to two. And as we drive out of this campsite, we will further adjust. So thanks for watching. Stick around for the next camp adventure from Juru Camping Adventures. Maybe it won't be such a disaster, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye guys.